It has been said the Sierra Nevada is one mountain 400 miles long and 45 miles wide. This California range crests in a 150 mile strip of treeless granite peaks, troughs and bowls known as the High Sierra or the Range of Light, a poetic name bestowed by the bearded naturalist John Muir. The spirit of this botanist, inventor, adventurer, writer and father of our national parks still hangs over these towering mountains. At the very summit of the High Sierra, Mount Whitney at 14,495 feet, the highest point in the lower 48 states. The usually poetic mountaineer was rather blunt in his description of Mount Whitney as one of those wall top peaks having no special geological significance beyond the scores of nameless peaks amid which it stands and possessing so little appreciable individuality that we did not meet a single person living here who was able to point it out. Yet Muir would also write, it is astonishing how high and far we can climb in mountains that we love. And on another occasion, I got back from Whitney this p.m. Life rose wave-like with those lofty granite waves. Climb the mountains and get their good tidings. Nature's peace will flow into you as sunshine flows into trees. The winds will blow their own freshness into you and the storms their energy, while cares drop off like autumn leaves. I am hopelessly and forever a mountaineer. John Muir last climbed Mount Whitney when he was 64 years old. This woman, Hulda Crooks, climbed it first when she was 66 years old. This day in August 1981, she was climbing Mount Whitney for the 20th time, and she was 85 years old. She too is an evangelist, climbing these California mountains at an age when many of her contemporaries are implanted in rocking chairs to encourage the young people she meets to take care of their health while they have it and to keep a good health program as they go through life. We will spend some time with Hulda Crooks to learn about her amazing background about with pneumonia and how it took her 25 years to get back on her feet. And once on her feet, how she started climbing mountains the way few people ever have. We'll see how she trains for her climbs and we'll see her in action with some of her high altitude evangelism. Hulda Crooks, on top again. When I started at 66, I didn't have a regular exercise program. And four years later, at age 70, I began jogging. And I could climb with me easier the year after I started jogging than I did four years earlier. I'm sure that uh, my regular exercise program of walking and jogging has uh, done a lot to hold back the aging process. She has climbed 76 of the Southern California peaks that the Sierra Club has on their official registry. They have 268 on that official registry, and she has done 76 of them. She was born in 1896 in Canada. She had only finished five grades of schooling by the time she was a teen, and she was overweight, 160 pounds, before she was 16. At 18, she left home to join the Seventh-day Adventist Church. The Adventists got hold of me and I changed my whole lifestyle. And not only accepted their doctrines, but their health teachings. 67 years ago, she became a vegetarian. She uses milk and a few eggs and whole grains and legumes, lots of fruit and vegetables. She says it's a very satisfying diet and it's very simple. When she was 27 years old, she moved to Loma Linda, California to study dietetics. And at 31, she married Samuel Crooks a professor at Loma Linda University. Though he couldn't, he urged her to exercise in the outdoors. And later, she and their only son, Wesley, would take extended backpacking trips. But she never forgot those days when her health was poor. One day uh, after my husband had gone to work, I was probably maybe 32, 33 years old. At the question came to my mind, what's going to happen to me? Am I going to die? Because I was tired all the time. 
And then quick as a flash came the thought, oh, well, if I die, I won't be tired anymore. That was my early 30s. But um, the uh, health program that the Adventists recommend, and that has been all through our literature all these years, is sound. And that this is what put me back on my feet again. But it took years. Though both her husband and son have died, Hulda keeps up her outdoor activity, works four to five days a week doing health research at the university, and also tours lecturing elderly people in hospitals and rehabilitation homes about exercise and diet. She climbs these stairs from five to ten times with her full pack. It is a good rehearsal for the climb up Mount Whitney. Hulda's preparations for her August climb of Mount Whitney were nearing an end. Because she is such an inspiration to others, a television crew accompanied her. The filming would start at the outpost camp at the 10,000 foot level. Having reached this point on the trail, she will rest here a day spending some of the time reading her favorite scriptures. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. Then would climb to the 12,000 foot level to rest there for an entire day. Up we go. <laughs> Another two and a half miles to another rest. Now let's join Hulda Crooks for her 20th climb to the top of Mount Whitney. During each of her climbs, she is joined by some of her close friends. Isn't that water pretty? Little gurgling stream. What a beautiful morning. Good morning. Good morning. Where'd you come from? We came from Cottonwood Pass. Oh, from Cottonwood Pass. I understand this is your 20th time up here. My 20th time. That's Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. At 85. That's great. <laughs> Here's my mountain, and that's me. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. This is one year old, so in the back, you'll see where I've done 60 Southern California peaks, and now I've done 76 by. Perfect this year. Are you the same family? We're all uh -huh. together. I should have given you children. You go and take it to school maybe, huh? Great. So are you going, up on, your... are you going on the top of Mount Whitney? Not today. No. <laughs> we're, we're going up to trail camp today. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Good. Great. And well, then uh, to the top hopefully Sunday. Glad we had a chance to meet you. We sure Thank, you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. These young folks, I can inspire them to take care of their health while they're young. Yeah. So many people don't know that. They're pretty healthy. We were at the top yesterday. Great. You yeah. keep that way. Okay. Then you'll be climbing mountains in your 80s, huh? <laughs> Thank okay. You. Yeah. Sunday to the top. Oh, my gosh. You young folks are my target. If I can inspire <laughs> you. <laughs> to take yeah. care of your health while you're young. Really? Inspire the other guys that don't know as much as you do. <laughs> you already yeah. know what's valuable oh, to good job, man. That's but, right. but you can help the other guys. Yeah. <laughs> okay? All right. Bye. Bye. Have a good day.
East switchbacks. There are only 97 in one row when we get above 12,000 feet. That water is pretty. The shooting stars are nearly all gone already. They're so pretty in July. Oh, the clouds are coming up. Makes pretty pictures, but I hope it doesn't rain on us. There's some red currants with berries on them. Ah, that's good. An easy trail for a little bit. Hulda and her group arrive at the 12,000 foot level Friday afternoon. Boy, it's good to get that pack off. They will prepare to camp here to rest for a day before they complete the climb. Hey, almost ready to get in. Saturday is the Sabbath for Seventh Day Adventists, so this will be the setting for an outdoor worship service. man's law if we follow God's law there wouldn't be any any reason to have all the laws and attorneys and you know it'd be really nice if everybody could could do that when we become Christians and have a goal that heaven comes first and that we trust the Lord and obey him we, we don't live the way we do if we have no such goal It was here at the trail camp that the climbers would see some of the Sierra native wildlife. More than a hundred years ago, John Muir wrote about the yellow-bellied marmots, the pocket gophers, wood rats, and the birds he had observed so closely during his years in the mountains. Sunrise Sunday morning, the start of a cloudless day for the climb to the summit. Her pack lightened for the final climb, Hulda and her friends leave the trail camp on their way to the switchbacks. It's getting colder. Step by step, we're getting there. John Muir walked these trails carrying a notebook, some dried bread, and a few tea leaves. Another American pioneer who walked along these paths was photographer huh? Ansel Adams. All his life he remembered the exhilaration of his youth in the 1920s, striding the high places with a heavy camera, absorbing the beauty of both lichen and distant peak, the sound of wind and water, and the ever-present benediction of light. Here comes the sunshine. In and out. Oh, we're getting up and up and up. A step at a time takes us to the top of the mountain. Isn't that right, Martin? Yeah, sure is. A step at a time. Close to yeah. We don't do it all in one jump. Oh, look 
it out this way, Martin. Here it's getting thinner. Have to rest off now. But we're almost there. Hey. Late morning, on a Sunday in August 1981, Hulda Crooks reached the summit of Mount Whitney, marking the 20th time she had climbed this, the tallest peak in continental America. Now there would be time to savor her victory. Recording television interviews. How does it feel? Great. Wonderful. Was it, was it tiring this year, more so than the other years? No, I can't say that it was. Accepting the congratulations of her friends. This being here at the top was always a special moment in her life. There's a real inspiration in getting out and doing something. I feel when I stand on top of a high mountain like I can go down and battle in the valley again. It rejuvenates me. Following the teachings of her church and studying the Bible have helped Hulda Crooks form her successful lifestyle. These have stood her in good stead, she told us. And having seen the vigor and enthusiasm with which she conquered Mount Whitney that August day, we suspect that like John Muir, she is hopelessly and forever a mountaineer. <laughs>